All right, here we go. Brenda Finner is our next director who's going to share her top five tips or whatever she wants to tip it on. So she became a Mary Kay Beauty Consultant at 18, 18, one eight. Maybe your mom made you do that. I don't know. She became a director three years later at 21. Her unit climbed steadily, achieving over 30 unit clubs and still going, and at least 15 pink Cadillacs. Um, extra proud to be two-time million-dollar unit and annual Miss Go Give. All the way from Texas, Brenda Fenner. Take it away, girl. Hey, thanks, Janice. Gosh, I just love that you're doing these because I personally love still listening all the time to people who've done great things. So this is this is fabulous. And of course, we love that Janice has come to Dallas and and gotten people together so that we have more power here. It's it's great. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much. And um, just so that I do clear that up. No, my mom didn't really want me. My mom was a very successful director, went on to become a national. But when I said maybe I wanted to do it, she just looked at me like, oh gosh, you're not really the high quality of woman I would normally choose. <laughs> so I had to bully her a little bit. And um, I think she's probably really glad that I did. But I am going to go a little, possibly, I haven't listened to the other ladies, but maybe a little bit different direction than some of them, because I believe that if you've gotten to Red Jacket, you have already heard to book, sell, book, share, you know, all of that, right? You, you've you heard it, you know it, even if your first three were kind of accidental, that's okay too. You know the direction. So to me, if I was to tell you that, that would kind of like me telling you to, for your other career that you have right now. Okay, don't forget, you need to set your alarm, put your clothes on, get in your car, drive yourself there, open your door and go into your office. And you do need to do that every day, okay? No, that's just part of what we do. But here's here's what I'm going to bring you that maybe will help you want to do those kind of things more. Um the first thing I think is, is just asking yourself, are you attracting people? Because I, Mary Kay told us in the very beginning, and thank goodness this was true, <laughs> that 99% of our success is based on our attitude. And what that means is people want, they either want to be around you. They want to work with you. They want a chance to hang out with you, or maybe they don't right? So what are we saying that is giving them that feeling? Like, how's your smile? Sometimes we get stressed and we're thinking and everywhere we go, we're not really smiling. And then when we look at someone, we try to smile, right? Work on smiling all the time. Like just, just give out your smile. Um, there's a makeup artist that came and taught us one time and she, and he said, if you see someone without a smile, give them one of yours. And I love that because I thought, gosh, everybody needs it. The other thing is you, oh gosh, hitting things. Um, you probably have already discovered this, but what are you using more and more of Mary Kay products? Are your friends saying to you, gosh, you look great. And you're thinking, oh, I finally use that biocellulose mask. Oh, I'm finally getting steady on using, you know, my peels and everything. So just, you know, use the product and people will notice and then they will want it too. If they want it too, guess what? You have a lot easier opportunity to talk to them then eventually about the business. Um, okay. I'm going to stick with my notes. One of the things that I think when we get excited about things, we want to share our goals, but then also we want people to realize, realize that we're working hard. And so I hear people telling their friends, oh my goodness, I stayed home last night and I called like 40 people. Well, I hate to say it, but a lot of us know that usually when we think we've called 40, it's about four. And it probably wasn't that hard of work if you want to compare yourself to some of the work that other people do, right? I mean, people drive in an hour of traffic or an hour to get to town to go work a 10 and a half hour day with a half hour lunch in a cubicle. And we're complaining because we spent an hour on the phone. So anyway, just careful with how you're wording things. You don't need people to think you're working hard or feel sorry for you. Um, one of the things I've always loved about this business is that 
we get to work hard and we play hard. So I've always taken time at Thanksgiving off. That's always been a really big thing. Not that I don't take plenty of other time, but this is just one example I want to use. And so I might work the weekend before. I might work, 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 work. I'm not going to tell the whole world I just put in 12 hours and even work some on a Sunday, which I normally don't do. I'm not going to brag about that because guess what? I've got the whole week of Thanksgiving off just to spend plenty of time with family. So just watch the words that are coming out of your mouth. Are they attracting people to you? Is your smile attracting people to you? Are your mannerisms just like you'll get better and better at that once you're conscientious about it? Because a lot of other careers, that's not really a thing. Like you either get paid, I mean, you get paid whether you're like that or not, but you you want to attract people to you. Okay. Um, people want to work with people who make them feel good. So are you asking about them? Are you concerned about them? Not like you're hearing whiny stories all the time. None of us want to hear those from anybody, but are you showing concern? Because if you show concern for people, people, again, they want to be with people who make them feel good about themselves. So anyway, okay, that's sort of all in point number one. Point number two, kind of like it, but be excited all the time. So it is so excited. I mean, it's so excited. It's so easy to be excited when things are going great. You know, you have a $2,000 party. You just got three team members right in a row. I mean, the world is on fire. Everything you touch is perfect. Like that's easy. What's hard is when four classes cancel in a row and then someone says, how's it going? That's when you're either professional or you're trying to have people feel sorry for you. So what are you going to say? How's the look on your face going to be? Are they going to want to be with you? Because guess what? You're not going to see them again the next day when things start going great again. So you just have to think about that. I mean, all the time, people want to be around people who, who are excited. Um, even when you're nervous, even when you're unsure, if you are unsure, who do you call? Your director, your national, people who are above you. Because guess what? They're nervous because they've been there and they've gotten past it. You certainly do not want to ask people who have never been in your shoes. And I'm just going to give you um, a good example. So I'm originally from, well, I won't say the exact city, but it's in Kansas and it's the capital. And it also has like um, all the federal buildings. And so everybody in that city thinks that the ideal situation for your life is to work somewhere that you are going to get an eight to five job with a paycheck with benefits. Now they don't care if you're paying $900 a month out of your pocket for those benefits. They think they have benefits, but anyway, that's a whole different story. I've never quite understood. But when I decided to not finish college and move out of my parents' house and live on my own with only my Mary Kay supporting me at 19 years old, people in that town thought I was crazy. Most of them were just waiting for me to, you know, run back with my tail between my legs. Others were probably talking behind my back, but you guys, I learned quickly that I could only listen to people who had done that. I couldn't take advice from the people who were in those jobs, unhappy and just waiting because they had 22 more years and they could retire. Oh, that sounded awful to me. Like I knew from such a young age that I didn't want to live my life like that. There's just no way you could coop me up in a building like that. Um, so anyway, but that was me. And I had mentors. I had seen my mom. I had seen her friends. I had seen other people. I knew it could be done. Now, we'll talk about this in a minute, but I didn't always know I could do it. I had to lean into other people's belief for that, but I would only talk to people who knew it could be done. So my mom used to always say, what you think about and talk about, you bring about. People who talk about being sick all the time, they are usually sick all the time. People who talk about great things happen to them, usually have great things happen to them. So you guys, I had moved out of that city, but I had, I still came back. I lived really close and did a lot of business in that town. I had bought my own home. I had um, bought my own boat. 
I was living life to its fullest, traveling and having all kinds of fun. And I would still run into people that would say, are you still doing what's what's that thing you're doing? I mean, they just could not believe that I could do anything other than work eight to five and and live in that lifestyle. So so I would just smile and say, yes, it's crazy. So even my very own family at one point when somebody was um found out about my boat and I I said, yeah, I love it. It's shiny red. I can pull it behind my free car, blah, 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 blah. You know, I was so excited. And um, and they said something about what else are you doing? And I said, just Mary Kay. I don't even have to be a hooker at night anymore. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I could not help but just give them just something to think about because they, I thought they were so crazy. So anyway, okay. Guard what goes into your heart, guard what goes into your head, listen to books that inspire you, listen to people who inspire you. Just, just be there. Okay. This is probably number three. Um, when I said I believed in the opportunity, I knew it was true that it was, it, it was successful. I had no doubt, but I don't know that I always believed fully in myself. And so what my mom would tell me, because she was my director, and let me just say, that's not always real easy to take advice, but she would just say, well, who do you really love? And I would name, you know, Cheryl Warfield or somebody that I just thought was like the best. Right. And she would say, just pretend you're them. And when you're at this sharing appointment at this interview and, and this lady who's probably older than you, that's what I was, was happening to me as I was feeling intimidated because I was young when they ask you a question you're unsure of, just put yourself in the, that person's shoes and just feel like, what would, how would she answer? And you guys, I, it was like playing pretend when you're a little girl, you know, like, oh, here's Barbie. She's going to meet Ken. Oh, hi. How are you? I mean, that's what I was doing. And it worked. It's like overriding that subconscious brain that just wanted to freeze and go, uh, um, um, hang on. Can I call my mom? <laughs> so you can do that too. You know, just pretend we're Janice, right? If I was Janice and I hated Zooms, I would just sit up straight and smile like I was Janice and loving Zooms. You know, I mean, you just, that's what Mary Kay said when she said, fake it till you make it, because eventually you're fine with all of that. It's just the beginning you're not. So anyway, lean into people so that it enhances your faith in yourself. Um, okay. Part of that, I didn't know where to put this part, but you guys be generous. All right. Be generous with buying people coffee to chat with them. Sometimes you get around to the opportunity. Sometimes you don't. If you're Janice, you go straight to the opportunity. If you're me, you fiddle faddle around and find out about themselves. And as soon as I see the opening that shows me why they love the opportunity, that's when I go in. It doesn't matter your style. We can all be totally successful, but don't be stingy. Don't be afraid to drive across town. Mary Kay taught us a long time ago. And yes, I've been in that long that I got training from Mary Kay. She taught us a long time ago that you say, oh, I would so love you to be to come with me. And you know what? I'm going to be right in your neighborhood. I could just pick you up. That'd be so easy because women were afraid to go places themselves. So you can pick them up and have coffee at Starbucks. You can pick them. I don't care if you have to drive an hour to be in their neighborhood. Okay. Then you call your customers. Hope you get some deliveries over there or something like that. Okay. So be generous with your hostess credit. You guys our hostesses literally can make the future for us. So wonderful because you don't want somebody saying, well, I had one of those Mary Kay parties. I think I got, um, she gave me a half price compact. No, you want them saying, oh my goodness. Like my hostess, First, she brought me this and she brought me that. And oh my gosh, it was so much fun. And she even provided some cookies. I don't care what you say. And it's the same with Zoom, if not more. Be generous because you don't even have to drive anywhere when you're doing them um, on social media. Good grief. So give to that hostess. That hostess is your best advertisement. She's going to tell her friends what she got and they're going to want to have parties. So if you have trouble booking parties from parties, Ask yourself, what are they saying when you're done? Do they have fun and do they get a lot for it? Or is it complicated and you're asking for phone numbers and 
and and you're you're asking more than you're giving. You want to give more than you ask, and then you'll start getting back more than you give, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, now here's the thing that I'll kind of wrap it up with. Um, you will never be perfect at this business. None of us are. Mary Kay would never have expected it. That's why she wanted a business for women so that we could thrive with our personalities who are perfect to everybody. That's how we're made, right? But you can get better. And so my encouragement to you is don't, don't stop learning. Always be willing to learn. Always be willing to listen to one more thing. Try it one more way. Try it a few times you know, if it's something new to see if you can get better at it. I'm not. Okay. So in my relationship with my husband, who we've been married over 28 years, um, he's the fast pace. Like he can change on a dime. Like, Oh, I heard this idea. Going to go this way. Boom, boom. Decision maker. Boom, boom. I'm not, I love my security. I move slow. I think about things, but guess what? Because I've been in Mary Kay, the longer I've been, the more I know I can trust when I get an idea and the faster now I can change. So lean into people who know that and know that these things, you guys, when they take a product away or when they, whatever, you know what? It used to just bug me to pieces. And now I just know that Mary Kay always does things in our best interest and it's going to be great. So don't even worry about it, but do hone your skills. Okay. I'll just give you a quick example. I was already a red jacket, but not quite a director sat down with a facial with somebody. Oh, she was so sweet. She was like my boyfriend at the time's friend's girlfriend. And I always thought she was so neat. And at the very end, when she wanted to buy everything and I said, well, Debbie, you know what? Oh my gosh, like you'd so love Mary Kay and I would love to have you on my team. And it's really great because the money is awesome. So did I ask questions? No. Did I listen? No. She was shy. She was sweet and shy. Okay. Guess what she said to me that just shocked me into my place, but it was good for me. It made me learn. She said, oh, Brenda, I mean, that's really neat for you, but I have a large inheritance, so I don't really need to work for money. I had, I had never heard of such a thing. <laughs> really? But what it did for me, see, I learned from it, right? I never asked. I started to ask people like, if you're ever going to do something like this, why do you think you'd like it? Well, guess what? She ended up graduating from college and she was so excited to tell me that she got a job at the blood bank and they were going to help her learn to talk in front of people. I wanted to scream because could have Mary Kay being a part of Mary Kay Cosmetics taught her to talk in front of people? Yes. Would it have been a lot more fun? Yes. But see, I didn't, I didn't do that right. So my point is keep learning, hone your skills. Don't get stuck in something. If it's working, keep doing it. If it's not working, then change it. Um, when People ask you if things are going great. It's always going great. Why? Because everybody will spread whatever you say. But if they say, if you say great, they won't spread it as fast. And if you say, mm, it's okay, a little slow right now, guess what they spread? Ooh, she's not doing very good. It must be, I wonder if it's COVID, if it's this, you know, people love to talk about the bad. So don't give them a chance to spread anything bad. Okay. That's again, when you talk to somebody up. So anyway, okay. Just, just so learn to coach better, listen more, close better. Those are just some of the things that I remember at this time frame have to get better. I mean, I love doing parties, but I'd also love going, oh my gosh, you guys look so pretty. I hope you get to go out and show everybody. See ya and not close. Well, when I learned to close, I got a lot better. <laughs> okay. So we all have things, right? You can be successful without knowing them, but it's a lot better at this time if you just keep getting better. And then remember that you do what it takes because it only gets better. So like, for instance, to get into DIQ, it might not be quite as simple as you thought. 
It might be simpler. You never know, but you do what it takes to achieve it. And then you just know that that opens this bright, huge world for you. That's just even better than you're going to dream. So once you get to directorships, then you have new goals and new friends and new dreams. And, and it just keeps going like that. You never get stagnant. And it's like the whole world. It's like a I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it's like, there's so much waiting, like a huge buffet waiting for you. And so just remember that. But right now, just do what it takes. One step in front of the other, book, sell, book, share. You know how to do that. So I wish you all the luck in the world. I don't know if Janice has any questions, but I hope this gives you a little bit of something that helps um, just get you there as fast as you want to go. Well, Brenda, oh my gosh, because I, if I listen to all of you guys, you're all so different. And I think that's what's a great thing is because you've given some things that nobody else has shared. And that's what I love about this is because it's the variety. And, you know, we all have our own story. And if my story isn't your story, someone's story is. So you pull from lots of different things. So, you know, again, I just want to thank you. That was amazing.